Welcome to Wednesday Night Storm. Last episode, world champion Samoa Joe called out the masked assailant who's been attacking people for the last month, and now we wait to see if that man will answer Joe's challenge. I'm waiting. If you're as tough as you think, get your ass out of here right now and face me. I know what you're after. Oh my god. That's Kenny Omega. Wow, well, folks, I don't really know what to say about that that we've just seen from Samoa Joe, and, and we still don't know who might be behind all this, but and what we do know is that the Fatal 4-Way that was supposed to decide the number one contender is now canceled for today, but we have an, maybe an equally big story here is Buddy Murphy coming out after his destruction of Sin Cara last week with the help of Ricky Steamboat who you see so apparently Buddy Murphy has aligned himself with the legendary Ricky the Dragon Steamboat beat Sin Cara last week with the help of Steamboat and now this week he will take on a former GAW Cruiserweight Champion And that cruiserweight champion is Pac. Lost his title at Nitro 9 just about a month ago. Coming out in some white gear tonight. Very interesting from the absolute savage from Newcastle. The bastard, they call him. He'll get a chance to derail the momentum of Buddy Murphy before it even begins, it's Pack versus Murphy with Steamboat in his corner, and it's next. 10 minute time limit in this match here, and we, we still don't know from Ricky Steamboat what his motivations are for aligning himself with Buddy Murphy. Although this, uh, this is a pretty good man to attach yourself to, I think. Murphy calls himself the best kept secret, and it's because he comes from much smaller promotions. Beautiful Dragon Rana from the top. Going for the early win on Pack with the pin. No. Yeah, Murphy's wrestled in smaller promotions. People don't really know much about him. He's young. But if there's a guy that you can attach yourself to, this is going to be the guy. Murphy wrestles fast and fluid. Keeps the pace up and matches more than almost any wrestler that we've seen even in the cruiserweight division and on top of that Murphy has the strength to compete with with guys that are much heavier than him now Pat going for the pin off the DDT no Murphy kicks out he's competing in the cruiserweight division now but he's held heavyweight titles in several other promotions that he's been with and you can see just such a unique style Wrestles with fluidity and pace, but also a frightening amount of strength for his size. Ricky Steamboat may have found himself a, uh, a man for the future. And now Murphy, it looked like he kind of fell off that top rope. I think Pac maybe had contacted him early, but then Pac going for the celebration. Murphy turns into a Northern Lights suplex and Pac kicks out. Weird sequence there, and this is what Pac does to people. Unorthodox style himself, and now Murphy going for the knee, and Pack evades. Murphy sets up the knee with that patented series of chops and strikes. Unique. And now Murphy beckoning Pack to his feet, lays the kick in. He's got the pump handle. We know what this is. He's hit it on Sin Cara. Murphy's Law. Steamboat loving it down there is Murphy going to win against the former GAW Cruiserweight Champion and he does. Buddy Murphy puts away the bastard. Beautiful Murphy's Law. That Dragon Rana early on in the match looked like it may have had it. May have had the win early. Huge win from Buddy Murphy. 
in his first match with Ricky Steamboat in his corner. The Dragon has to be happy with what he's seen. Murphy puts the former Cruiserweight Champion away in short order with Murphy's Law. And now we may have the new number one contender in the Cruiserweight division. Wins over Sin Cara and Pac. Where is Murphy headed next? We don't know, but where we're headed next is Alistair Black's first match back. Well, this is certainly a unique match that we have here. Alistair Black making his return. It was three weeks ago that he was assaulted by the man that we now know is targeting the the top contenders for the GAW World Championship. All we ever got was that photo of Black on the ground. Black last week making it clear that he will return and he is doing so tonight. He was scheduled to compete in the Fatal 4-Way uh, for the number one contender to the GAW World Championship and now that match has been canceled. Black is the only man now active, of course. We still haven't heard from Kazuchika Okada in Japan. Uh, Cody Rhodes still recovering after being attacked last week by a masked, a masked assailant. And now, of course, this week it was Kenny Omega who was laid out on stage at the opening of the show. So Aleister Black is the only man who seems to be at least somewhat healthy. And he is not happy with this turn of events. And the man he will be facing is one of the other men involved in that eight-man tag match five weeks ago. I know it feels like such a long time, but the hangman was on the losing side of that match and of course you know you you hate to speculate you hate to be suspicious of people that have given you no reason to be but there is at least motivation for the four men that were on the losing side of that match to be the masked man attacking uh, the number one contenders for the world championship so again you hate to speculate but you feel like maybe Adam Page would be a, a, a suspect I think uh, would be the right word for it. So it's hard to say. But right now, again, we can't speculate because he has a daunting task ahead of him. Well, Alistair Black clearly frustrated with what's going on, but eats the drop kick from Hangman. There's so much we don't know about the world championship picture right now with all the men that were supposed to be competing for the number one contendership having had run-ins with whoever this strange mass competitor is and Paige just trucks the referee on his way to the top rope. We don't see him come up here very often, but when he does, it can be dangerous. Massive shotgun drop kick. This is a different side of Adam Page than sometimes we see. Now going for the pin on Aleister Black. Black kicks out. Big drop kick. Page really taking it to the Dutch, Dutch Destroyer in the first minute of this match. Black going for, it looked like the kitchen sink. Page evades and now DDT. Page going to the other side. I think we know what he's looking for. It's his patented buckshot lariat springboard. No. Alistair Black manages to evade that. And now Black with the exploder suplex. Beautiful look of that. Alistair Black, of course, mixed martial arts background. He's so dynamic. So dangerous as a striker. Oh, my God. Just with that quick roundhouse and now Black setting up for the Black Mass. 
Page up to his feet. Black letting him do it. This is what's dangerous about the Black Mass. It can, it, Alistair Black usually actually performs it in, in pairs almost. He did it to Drew McIntyre. He performed two Black Masses to the Scottish Psychopath. So this match, obviously not for number one contendership or anything, and, and it's hard to say what the status is of the GAW World Championship. Samoa Joe did not get his answer about who the masked man was, although next week he might, given that disturbing message that we saw when Samoa Joe was out earlier today, burning hammer from Hangman Page. And now Page targeting the arm of Black. Look at the stomps straight to his hands. You got to question the strategy. Black, of course, is a is a kick specialist, but Page. I thought maybe he was setting up for Dead Eye, but Black gets out of it, and now with the Olympic Slam. And now Black repaying in kind, targeting the arm of Adam Page. As far as the women's championship goes, that's also in question. Oh, Alistair Black trying to make Paige submit here with the single leg crab. Black obviously very proficient in submission maneuvers given his background. But Paige able to get out of that. And now Paige setting Black up again and Black puts in the elbow. Avoids potentially the dead eye. Frightening strength and power from Alistair Black. He's already hit one black mass in this match, obviously. It was very early on, double knees to the back. So when it comes to the women's championship, we know about as much about that as we do about the men's. Of course, Asuka attacking Charlotte Flair after Charlotte had promised she would explain her actions. It's been radio silence from both of them this week. We assume Charlotte Flair is still recovering from that attack. So maybe next week we'll learn more. Black, Black now stalking his prey here. Maybe the most dangerous man in GAW. Beautiful standing cutter from Alistair Black. We don't always see him break that one out. Is that good enough to put away the hangman? And Page kicks out at two. The variety of Alistair Black's offense is really incredible. It's not something you see every day. This is gonna be the kill shot right here. We know what this is the prelude to. Black Mass. Hangman is out. Alistair Black, without question, wins this match. It's his first match back after being attacked. And he has made his intentions clear to the rest of the division and whoever the masked man is that's been attacking GAW wrestlers. Alistair Black is a force in this division. Yes, it's our main event of the evening. And with all the craziness surrounding Samoa Joe's world championship that has been going on today, we've basically forgotten to mention that there is a title on the line tonight. It's the Intercontinental Championship for the third time in four weeks. There will be a title on the line in the main event, in the main event of Wednesday Night Storm. Walter, of course, beating Kofi Kingston with that massive lariat last week. And Kingston, of course, vowing to be a fighting champion. He agreed to take on Walter for the, Inter for the Intercontinental Championship tonight on Storm. It's been a crazy episode. Will we see a title change?
And here comes the Intercontinental Champion. It would be disappointing if Kofi loses his title tonight. Of course, he is so popular, so fun to watch. I mean, I'm just, I'm smiling just watching his entrance right now. This man really is something else. It would be a shame if he loses his title. But I, you know, I got to stay unbiased. I don't have a rooting interest. I'm just saying, just saying, from a fan's perspective, the Intercontinental Championship is on the line in our main event next. No time limit for this match. We will walk out of Wednesday Night Storm with a champion one way or the other. Walter just immediately taking it to the very, very popular champion. Gut wrench bomb. Walter, one of the overall strongest competitors in GAW. Kingston, very smart, rolls out of the ring and answers with the Hurricane Rana. This is a real clash of styles here. Kingston, while not exactly a cruiserweight, certainly moves like one, but deceptive strength from a man of his size. And then, of course, Walter, just a powerhouse in every sense of the word. Walter believes he is owed this title. The title first won by the legendary GAW champion AJ Styles. A 10-year history in this belt. Volter now trying to pin the champion. Kingston kicks out immediately. Men like AJ Styles, Kenny Omega, CM Punk, some of the greatest wrestlers in the history of GAW have held this title. Kingston won it from Adam Cole three weeks ago. And now trying to consolidate against the dangerous Volter. Avoids that strike. Kingston with a beautiful satellite DDT from the middle rope. Working on the arm. Smart strategy here from the champion. It was the Lariat that put him away last week and now the Lariat connects and Kingston out at one. Walter thought that Larry would be enough. It was last week. Kingston finding another gear. Got the waist lock and Walter out immediately. Two men squaring up. Walter has yet to win a championship in GAW. This is Kingston's second. He's been a tag team champion before side rush and leg sweep. Boom drop coming from Kingston. Electrifying move. The fans love it. Going for the pin. Boom drop. Not enough. What a match this has been so far. Bolts are trying to land that kick. Kingston. Beautiful monkey flip from Kofi Kingston. And answered with the big boot. You can't keep this man down for very long. Volter, it was a... It was quick offensive moves there. And now setting up for the power bomb. It's one of the most dangerous power bombs in the world. And Kingston wisely evades. But just immediately walks into that hip toss from the challenger. You're seeing why Volter is so difficult to beat, why he is so feared all over the world. His size and strength is almost unmatched. 
combined with his excellent knowledge of human anatomy and his extensive training all over the world. But now Kingston answers with a little forearm and Kingston back into the ring. Waiting for Valter and Valter snaps Kingston against the ropes. And Valter with that twisting cutter. Kingston might be bleeding, I think, maybe from his forehead. Valter really trying to press his advantage against the champion. Valter going for the pin. Referee a little slow to get there. One, two. Kingston kicks out. Well, the kick not having an effect on the champ. Kingston tosses Valter into that corner and cannot consolidate with an offensive move. Valter using the ropes now. Every corner, every inch of this ring, Valter can use can, can, to increase, to inflict damage. Massive stomp. Oh, Kingston! Look at the strength from Kingston, the arm toss. And now the champ trying to work his way back into this match. Bit of a shoulder barge there from Kingston. Olympic slam on the 300 pounder. Wow, Kofi Kingston, where is this bit of energy coming from? And Valter shuts it down almost immediately. Looking for the power bomb on Kingston. And again, Kingston evades. Very smart from the champ. That power bomb is as dangerous a move as you will ever find. Valter into the corner, monkey flip, Kingston. Valter up, Kingston, springboard, cross body. And now Kingston going into the pin, and rolling away. Not enough to pin the mighty challenger. Kingston looking for trouble in paradise. It put away Adam Cole to win this title. Valter gets out of the way. Trouble in paradise again, and Valter gets out of the way. And now gut wrench. Suplex from Valter. Oh my god. The massive 300 pound Valter going up top. Kingston though. Gets up and Valter answers with the diving forearm. You don't often see a man that big go to the top rope. He does it with effectiveness. Kingston has him in the corner. Laying in the strikes on the challenger. And Valter manages to push him away, but not after the damage had been done from Kingston. Falcon arrow from the champ. That's on a 300 pound man, and Valter kicks out at one. I told you, Kingston's, Kingston's strength is deceptive for his size. He moves like a cruiserweight, but he has the strength to compete with men as big as Valter. Kingston laying in two kicks. Trouble in paradise, and it's caught into the exploder suplex from Valter. And the massive challenger just admiring his handiwork here. Catches the trouble in paradise, turns it into an exploder. Valter actually allowed Kingston to get to his feet, and it backfired. Kingston lands trouble in paradise. Has to drag the challenger into the middle of the ring. Rolls him back over, Kingston trying to retain. Two, three, Kofi Kingston does retain. Volter was admiring his work a little bit too long. And it cost him. Kofi Kingston made his way to his feet, landed trouble in paradise. And that was enough for Kingston to retain the Intercontinental Championship. It's been a pretty straightforward division compared to some of the world championship scenes, the men and the women. Kofi Kingston earns his belt after beating the massive challenger. The fans love it, I love it. Kofi Kingston is Intercontinental Champion. Next week on Storm, hopefully we'll learn a little bit more about this mass competitor that's been attacking 
world championship contenders. But for now, subscribe and thank you so much for joining us.